Godzilla Rules of Earth is definitely one of the best IDW comic series of all time. Definitely one of the best Godzilla IDW comic series, I should say. And because, you know, some Transformer series do just outdo it all together. But when it comes down to this series here, there are so many things, so many events that take place. The sheer amount of chaos that's happening in this story just to build up everything is absolutely breathtaking. But today we're going to see if another character could handle all the chaos and monstrosity. We're going to see if Rayquaza, you know, Pokemon's residential Earth Guardian himself here, is able to handle all the events that come his way. Let's talk about it. So to start us for scaling, if you guys want, you guys can go check this video out in my power scaling playlist uh, for Rayquaza here. He's actually pretty powerful. You can easily get him to Outerversal and stuff like that there. And we're not really going to focus too much on power scaling here. We're going to focus more so on the story aspect here. All right. So you could actually say this is like a tier equalization here, which I will do on some occasions on this channel just to kind of prove a point here or just to make sure it's not a one sided stump. Right. So with that being said here, what will Kraza be in the Godzilla verse or in this IDW verse in general? Well, it's uh, pretty simple. He's going to maintain his role. But probably a bit differently here. You see, since Rayquaza patrols the outer layers or the space area around Earth and stuff there, and considering he is known as an ancient guardian, it wouldn't be too far-fetched to say that throughout millions of years on Earth, he's been protecting not only the planet from its own threats, but from extraterrestrial threats as well, preventing even older alien invasions here. So you could say, like, maybe he's fought other beings like... Um, which we call it older versions of Gigan, Megalon, maybe other forms of Orga, Hedora, so on and so forth. Basically, all these alien like threats here. And this would mean he would have a close relationship with Mothra. Now, Mothra and him would definitely have like a guardian and guardian relationship here, where they both have their own areas to protect here as well. And this would also give him a good relationship with King Caesar, who was also an ancient guardian. So these three will basically be protectors of Earth here. Now, you might say, what will Rayquaza actually contribute to it? Well, he prevents alien invasions. Kind of obvious, right? He's actually built up a reputation for it, not only through Earth's history, but through the Cryogs history, which were the main villains and rulers of Earth. So the Cryogs actually fear him and really don't want to go near Earth unless they have a decent distraction or a decent plan to get past him here. And you might ask, what is his relationship like with Godzilla? Well, I do believe Rayquaza would definitely step in if Mothra can't handle it. However, if Mothra can handle Godzilla, then Rayquaza would definitely just be like, okay, she's got it. I'm just not going to worry about it here. Back to my post. However, if she doesn't have it, then Rayquaza is going to speed blitz Godzilla from the atmosphere and make sure he takes care of it pretty quickly here. So with that being said, where Rayquaza is established as an Earth's guardian, having a mild, um, I would say, rivalry with Godzilla at best here, where would he appear? And in all honesty, I would have him appear in the issue where Mothra, Godzilla, and Destroyer all duke it out. Uh, I would definitely have that there here. However, where he appears is... <clears throat> excuse me here. Where he appears is definitely one of the more interesting points I had to figure out, right? I would definitely have him appear early. Like when Godzilla does nuclear pulse, Rayquaza would actually be down there right in front of them. They both would growl at each other a bit and definitely charge up like their hyper beam and a Tom Beth respectively. However, when Destroy goes onto the scene, that goes out the window here. They start handling business here. Now again, Destroyer is formidable. No one's going to disagree about that. And again, I do think Destroy is definitely putting hands on Rayquaza. However, Rayquaza's speed, his agility, and his overall better versatility is definitely going to pay an essential for this team getting the dub here. And in all honesty, I could definitely see like Godzilla and Rayquaza as they're like charging their attacks, see Destroyer out the corner, corner of their eye, look at each other again, and just focus both attacks on him and causing major amounts of damage here. And after that, Rayquaza could just speed blitz around Destroyer while Godzilla starts landing attacks here. Again, I think they would work together pretty well here. You know, Rayquaza's speed and agility and overall versatility with Godzilla's better strength capabilities here. 
and then this will lead to Mothra showing up, and then we just have a triple team here. Like, it's... It's basically over for Destroyer at that point. Mothra wouldn't get sliced up here. She would then be at full strength at that point then. And then we get to see Rayquaza basically hammering Destroyer with everything it has here. However, I think Mothra, who has more experience with Destroyer, would definitely go to indicate that Destroyer is weak to ice. Now again, keep in mind, Mothra in the IDW series is known to be telepathic. This is important here. So this means she can communicate with other kaiju and humans telepathically. Meaning that, again, she would tell that mm -hmm. Rekwe, tell Rekwaza, excuse me, that um, Destroy is vulnerable to extreme temperatures. And he shoots at an ice beam and this does major damage. I mean, it's an ice-based attack. It's a cryomancy attack, if you will. Which, again, Destroyer is very vulnerable to. This is a shown with the... Uh, this was shown, excuse me, with the Absolute Zero missiles. This was shown with the Absolute Zero cannon. And, again, it's the reason why we don't really see Destroyer going into, like, the Arctic areas and stuff like that there. So, with that being said here, this means that the fight here now changes the story altogether now. Our craze is on Earth he's with mothra he's with godzilla and mothra's not injured meaning that she doesn't need to get carried away by her larva and i can actually see a bit of a comedic moment or at least like a loving moment between Rayquaza and the two mothra larvae but again Rayquaza would then see he has other things to do and would definitely go around the planet squashing any kaiju beef specifically varin and rodan i could definitely see him like blasting a hyper beam between the two and just giving them like a look like you better not y'all better not be fighting down here you know kind of like how he treats groudon and kyogre from his verse you know he's kind of sick of their nonsense and sick of their fighting and would do the same thing for the kaiju here. I mean, or the earth-based kaiju here. Because again, y'all gonna live here. And y'all gonna live here together peacefully. I don't want no nonsense between y'all. And the thing is though, I can actually see a lot of the kaiju respecting, if not flat out fearing Rayquaza due to this here. I do think some of the earth defending kaiju would rather back away than actually finding him. However, anyone who's a little too ballsy and would definitely try to jump at Rayquaza is definitely going to get shot down immediately. Now, we would definitely have to skip a couple issues here because I don't think he would be here. After dealing with Varen and um, Rodan here, I definitely think he's going to be heading into space here. And we're not going to see him for a couple of issues until we get to issue, I think it was like 17, where Space Godzilla and Gigan duke it out in space here. And I definitely think this is where the Cryog definitely start to panic here. I mean, you, you got one of the few monsters that you actually fear heading towards you. And believe it or not, Rayquaza not playing, meaning that this means that he's going to hit them with a Dragon Ascent and likely wipe them out there. But let's say that they kind of get lucky. Considering Space Godzilla was heading their way as well, Rayquaza could possibly accelerate his speed and then send Space Godzilla and divert his attention to them or to him, seeing him as a much bigger threat here. This means that Rayquaza now has to fight both Gigan and Space Godzilla, which would likely tag team him rather than fighting each other, or it could just be one big free-for-all where winner takes all here and again i can definitely see Rayquaza definitely being on the back foot a little bit here because again if it's a free-for-all it could definitely be a bit confusing but i do see him being able to pressure both of them and i definitely see him being able to beat either space godzilla or gigan before one of the other retreats now the most likely way to go about this here is to kind of picture it as like a grotto and kyogre scenario because i can see if Rayquaza arrives while space godzilla and gigan are fighting then they yeah, can literally yeah. do a kyogre and grotto situation see him as a bigger threat switch it around or at least turn you know at least like look at each other like hey we we gonna have to jump him real quick before we fight each other, and then this turns into again a Groudon and Kyogre situation. However, again, Rayquaza is very experienced in two v ones and knows how to adjust himself accordingly, meaning that he wouldn't be taking too many hits and he would definitely make sure to get the two of them in a basically a line of sight to where he could basically finish both of them off here. I could definitely see him using Draco Meteor, and this is 
going in space as well so this might actually come down faster with the um i probably eh, i don't know i'm not really going to get into the gravitational sciences of the things here but it is what it is here this means Rayquaza is definitely going to be using each and every attack here with more and sorry more deadly force than he does in his own verse here and it's very likely he's going to wipe out either space godzilla or gigan but let's just say he damages both of them so badly that they decide to retreat okay so this means Rayquaza now has to head to earth and it's very possible he does disable or at least destroy a lot of the cryog that are there you see, there's no reason why he wouldn't do this. I mean, the cryog are the reason why Earth gets invaded, right? So, it's very possible. And in all honesty, kind of thinking about this fight just a little bit more here, it's very possible he does, like, obliterate one of them. Like, I'm not even joking. He might trap one in Twister and then proceed to just nuke them from the top with a whole black hyper beam or something. I, I don't know. Then it's very possible he can use Dragon Descent to drive one of them into like a star or something. Again, Rayquaza's pretty fast here. And he's very dangerous when defending his own home blend. Again, he's willing to kill for it. it this is something he's been doing for a while. So it's a bit of a 50-50 whether or not he does it. But um, Rayquaza would definitely head back to Earth as he would probably sense the arrival of Batra. Yeah, I can definitely see that coming. And see that happening, excuse me. And the reason why I would say that is because Batra, maybe Mega Gears as well, are very powerful and pretty much essential threats, right? So what I actually see happening here is he doesn't arrive right away. I, I wouldn't do that for the sake of the story because it would mean like Godzilla has someone else to just like save him in this situation here. I would let everything play out except for the Trilopods first wave of invasion Rayquaza arrives but he just barely just narrowly misses the trilopods um launch pad he just barely misses the you know attack here um let's say it's a dragon pulse he barely misses that right now the trilopods are on earth and Rayquaza understanding this ignores the ship that launched it which will come back to buy him later obviously and just goes for the trilopods here this means he's fighting with mechagirus batra um and the mothra twins all right this means that now Rayquaza has to deal with a new invasion and now he feels like he failed now he's gonna have to really like lean into that more bloodlust side of him and it's very possible he just goes into a fit of rage and starts just wiping out every trilopod within the area and I can actually see that happening, which means that Godzilla wouldn't get captured by the Mega Gears trilopod, and everything would actually go smoother. Huh. This does that actually does change a lot here, meaning that we don't get Godzilla infected or Godzilla amped trilopods, right? And Godzilla's still wandering around. Rayquaza is now on Earth. Mothra's at full strength, meaning that she can actually fight off Batra a lot better than what she did in the original, possibly holding him off until King Caesar arrives, which then means we get into a whole bunch more different scenarios than what we've had before. So this means that with Godzilla um, around and about, still kicking and not being captured here, this means that Monster Island might actually have a chance to fight off the Trilopods in this situation here. You see, the reason why I was never fine with the whole Trilopod invasion of Monster Island, and I guess whoever knows me um, knows I, I really hated this in all honesty, but maybe I never talked about it before, though, but I never liked this. It just made the Kaiju look weak here and they really had nobody to like help them out or organize them like uh king caesar or rodan so this means that Rayquaza would definitely be heading to monster island trying to help out the rest of the kaiju here i could see him pulling everyone together being able to actually help everyone and this means that they may not even get captured in this situation Baragon, Anguirus, Varen, Rodan, um, Kumonga, Sanda, Garaya, K 
Kamibis, they all don't get captured because Rayquaza is able to organize them as well, along with Gorosaurus, you know, being, again, one of the heavy hitters on the island, being able to actually kill a good chunk of these Trilopods before he even got captured. This means he doesn't get captured either, along with Titanosaurus as well. Excuse me, I can't believe I forgot those two. And this means that they're... The trilopods don't have any Godzilla or kaiju amped versions of themselves here. Meaning now their invasion is pretty much stonewalled here. However, there is a possible way this could turn out worse. And I will discuss it here with King Caesar. Uh, well, sorry, not with King Caesar. I don't think King Caesar would get captured either. Because this means that he awakens just like the original. And that means he and Mothra actually tag team Batra rather than just king caesar fight, fighting him by himself this means that mothra cannot go and recover properly she can now take a rest here while king caesar goes to fight off the rest of the trilopods rips them apart and then we actually have a different scenario playing out here the whole godzilla and space godzilla team oh i definitely would still have that here but this is where things change drastically you see the original story king caesar feigned his capture to where um uh well he had to feign his capture excuse me i'm trying to remember it and then snuck into the trilopods made hq and then freed everybody right however Rayquaza, king caesar mothra and godzilla all being there means they all just have to fight the trilopods by themselves and now they're underpowered so this means that Rayquaza's influence here now only has, or Rayquaza's placing in this verse here, not only has um, changed a lot of the story drastically, but this also helps out because that means they have Mogira, Kiryu, and all the other Earth Defenders with Jet Jaguar as well. Probably, eh, if Gigan's not dead, then he'll probably die here. This means that Zilla also joining in the fray to actually fight against the Trilopods. And again, they're all underpowered. This means that every kaiju here really just wipes the floor with him. Like, they, they wipe the floor with the Trilopods easily. And then I would probably have a moment where Rayquaza actually dives into the Trilopod nest because he senses something. Rayquaza would go in there, and this is where he would definitely meet Majita. Now, this is actually pretty important here, because I do think Majita is possibly, possibly amped here, because of, again, the DNA that was in the all these trilopods and stuff, and there's no way it didn't reach her, so that might have actually contributed here. But let's say she's not here, and she's just naturally that strong here. This means that she would probably have to join the fight sooner in order to give her kaiju a fair chance. And this is where I would definitely have a twist to the story here, where Majita is not only involved in the fight with her trilopods, but she's able to grab Godzilla and Rayquaza at the same time and siphon both of their energies, becoming this horrendous fusion of both of them. This Majita or this trilopod mixture of Godzilla and Rayquaza's powers and features so this would actually be pretty devastating albeit Majita is definitely not going to be moving as fast here she can use all their attacks their powers their abilities so Godzilla's regeneration with Rayquaza's speed the atomic hyper beam dang that actually sounds pretty cool or the hyper atomic beam I, I don't know or the hyper atomic breath I think that actually goes a bit harder I don't know let me know down below which one sounds better and this would probably mean that Godzilla and Rayquaza likely have to combine their energies to each other likely doing some like energy synchro synchronization like they do in Bakugan with like Pyrus Darkus, Chaos and uh I think it was like Chaos and Aquas and then Ventus is up terror. I don't know. It, 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 you guys get what I mean here. They synchronize their energies just to like go into this like mega evolved and then this fusion state to where they pretty much just obliterate Majita. And then after that, um, well, I could probably see Rayquaza likely leading all the other kaiju that survived back to Monster Island. Mogira, Kiryu, and 
whatchamacallit, um, Jet Jaguar all getting rebuilt. Godzilla goes back to the sea. And then afterwards, Mothra goes back to Infant Island instead and actually rests properly this time. Meanwhile, with Kraza, after leaning all the monsters back, definitely is probably going to place King Caesar in charge of them. And, well, he goes back into outer space and continues his job, likely resting on the moon now with this invasion over with. So, yeah, that's what I think what would happen if Rayquaza was in Godzilla Rulers of Earth. Please comment down below, like, and subscribe, and share it to your friends. This is Legendary Grimlock, and I hope you guys have a blessed day.